Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today on this podcast uh, or YouTube video or blog post, however you are digesting our content today. I started this podcast because I'm a real estate agent, just like most of the listeners, and my passion, well, actually, I have several businesses, and my passion for, in all of them is lead generation, because the one thing that I understand is that if I have enough leads, I have enough choices on how to run my life. Everything, everything revolves around how many leads do we have that we can we can get to the closing table. So it's important. What I also know is that even though I'm feeding my real estate team here in Las Vegas, uh, I don't know everything. There's a lot of lead generation sources out there that I haven't touched or haven't mastered, that's for sure. I kind of play right here in the internet marketing game and do a lot with search engine optimization, pay-per-click marketing, and uh, with video myself. And then I go out and interview a lot of other people on what they're doing really well. So some of the agents on my interviews are new and they're just killing it with something or they're new to that source. I, a couple weeks ago, I had on um, John Verdeau from the Holly McRae team, their husband and wife team, and they're they're doing I don't know 100 plus million dollars a year in sales, 400 units. But he's new to this Instagram stories, and he's killing it. So I brought him on to talk about that, even though he hasn't been doing it for a long, long time. So everybody I'm talking to is doing something really well. It stood out to me, and that's the reason that they are on the call. And that is why I invited Karen here today. Karen Carr is from Savannah, Georgia. And I've been getting a kick out of watching what she's been doing with her YouTube channel. And it's something that I teach in my ranklikeaboss.com training course. And when I travel live is how important video is and how underutilized it is. And my feelings are that you can kill it with it with a video channel and almost not even have a have a have much you're doing with your website and not much you're doing with with social if you're i i prefer multi-channel marketing but you if you really go out there and do video at a high high level and fill the niches and solve problems and answer questions you can generate a lot of business from it not always trackable part of it is like wrapping a car and that's part of the brand out there but I love what Karen's doing. So Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here. All right. So here's what we're, we're going to talk about. You're fairly new to, um, to, the, to the videos, although you've done a lot with it. I've been watching it. So you were explaining that you really just started making weekly videos right last June. Is that correct? That's correct. So I have a website with a blog and I had been getting a lot of success with my blog and I started making YouTube videos simply for the purpose of embedding them in the blog to help the blog rank higher. I really wasn't using YouTube per se, except as just a place to host all of the videos. Oh, gotcha. And then I started getting people calling me saying, hey, we found your website. We've been watching all of your videos. I feel like I know you already. We want to buy a house. Will you help me? And I kind of had this epiphany when they said, you don't know me, but I feel like I know you because I've been watching all of your videos. And I thought, I need to be a lot more intentional with video. Well, right, because what, what we know is that people do business with people they know or think they know. Well, how do we... How do we create something where people feel like they know us? Social media is one of those platforms, obviously. And video is another. I've had a lot of people call me and say things like, you look honest. And it always makes me laugh. Like, what am I doing that makes me look honest? But you know what it is? It's, it's, it, it's the same with what I'm watching your videos. You, you, there's an energy. There's a certain energy about how you say certain things and how you present yourself. So it gives the person the opportunity to actually kind of like you a little bit, right? Without just and, and your business card. Exactly. And, and what you said when they say you seem honest, that the very first lead I ever got from my YouTube channel, I said, how did you find me? And he said, well, I found you on YouTube and I watched a bunch of your videos and you seemed honest and trustworthy and like you knew what you were talking about. So I went to his house for a listing presentation totally prepared that I was up against other agents and I was going to have to justify why you should hire me over them. And when I asked him, who else are you interviewing? He said, nobody, just you, we picked you. Yeah, that's fantastic because really you already qualified yourself 
because you positioned, positioned yourself as an expert by doing those videos. And so that yes. already gave you a leg up. And the fact that they felt like they liked you also made them feel like they trusted you. And don't we exactly. almost always trust the people we like? Yes. And if we and don't like them, we'll tend to say the other way, won't we? Yeah. And what I really am liking is that the people that seem to be attracted to my YouTube videos are people that I would naturally get along with. Like when they watch my videos, if they don't like my personality, they're not going to call me. So the people that are contacting me are people that I would want to hang out with personally anyway. And so I've had a really good experience with the people that I've met so far that have contacted me from YouTube. They're all people that I want to go out to dinner with on Saturday night. That's fantastic. And it's so true. We attract who we are, not who we, we attract who we are, not necessarily who we want. But when you put yourself on video like that and you want to be attracting people who you are, because that's who you're going to enjoy spending time with. It's, it's exactly. a fantastic way to do. There's so many ways to do video. I went through your channel and, um, and viewed several of your playlists. And what I noticed with you for the most part is most of yours are what I call talking head videos. And, yes. and so there are you on camera, you're positioned, um, stationary pretty much from the ones that I saw and you're, you're doing, you're answering a question that a buyer or seller would have when they're, you know, what something in the process when they're selling a home or something in the process, they're buying a home. And then you have your local ones also for moving to, to Savannah or why you would like Savannah. And those are more out and about. But your your talking head ones are kind of where it looks like you're you're specializing right now. And you said you got the idea to what you wanted to do is you wanted to add video to your blog. So you started making the blogs based on the video. Have you yet gotten to the point where that's reversed, where you're going, oh wait, let me make a video on that and then make a blog? Yeah, in fact, that's totally what I'm doing now. Just because writing the blog takes me so much longer. It takes me 15 minutes to record a video, plus then some editing time afterwards. But if I write a 3,000 word blog post, I'll obsess over it for a week. So now I've done what you had said. I just use rev.com and I have the video transcribed. I then copy the transcription and post that. That becomes the blog post. Yeah. So what, what Karen's talking about for the listeners that haven't yet experienced this, I have a whole YouTube series and a training course on how to do this exact thing, but it's so, so powerful. What, sh what she's saying is 3000 words, which is honestly um, really what it takes this day and age to rank on the search engines, to cover a topic in depth. You're going to be writing thousands of words. If you're really, if you're really answering a, the que a question appropriately and diving into a topic, well, to sit down and write all that, it's going to take hours. You have to think about what's going to go into every topic, and then you're going to go try to make a video. But instead, if you start with the video and you kind of got some, some points on what you're going to talk about, you can say thousands of words without even realizing it. Right, Karen? <laughs> don't, don't Absolutely. Your, I, we have to edit ourselves sometimes because you can talk and talk, but you all of a sudden you send that to rev.com, R-E-V as in victor.com and for a buck a minute they'll transcribe your video from uh, verbal word to written word now i would teach you guys that if you are focused on search engine traffic at all you're going to want to do a lot more than just put the transcript on the page you're going to want to optimize it and 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 there's a lot more to that but if if that's not what your goal is you just simply want to have the blog and you want to share it on social you may not need all of that are you doing any kind of optimization, Karen, or are you just now getting to the point where you're just doing the transcript? I wasn't doing optimization until I listened to one of your recent videos where you said you need to be putting links and you need to be optimizing the blog post as well. So now I'm doing that too. Yeah, and I will tell you that's something that can be hired out. So for those of you that, that like Karen, you're so good on video, you you may or may not want to sit and and do you enjoy the process of sitting and doing the optimization? Or the well, enjoy is kind of a strong word. No. <laughs> Do you hate it? Are you somewhere in the no. middle? Yeah, I don't hate it. It's just time. It's just time. You know, yeah. you get to the point where you're thinking, okay, is this the best use of my time? I now have so many clients coming to me. Um, I've got five different clients that are coming to Savannah next week alone that either found me from the blog or from the YouTube video that want to start house hunting in Savannah. They're moving here from DC or Florida or wherever else. 
that you start to go, okay, is this really the best use of my time? I should hire this out so that I have more time to spend with clients. Yeah. And I will tell you right now that your best, um, well, you're, of course, you know, this, your best, um, dollars, your best time spent is actually face to face with the clients, but next to that, it would be making the video. And if I were you, it, unless it's something that you really want to learn or you feel the need, sub that stuff out, um, get somebody else to do it. There's so many options from interns to marketing companies to, in fact, we've got a service we're rolling out soon for, with that uh, at Ballon Brands, virtual assistants, you know, so that you're not happy to be bogged down because your talent is in, in, is in making the, the videos. Now, let me ask you a couple questions on that, on the topic of, of that. Where are you getting the ideas? Because uh, this is, and I, I, of course, you know, I know every trick of the trade to where to get ideas from, but um, this is the biggest struggle. There's two struggles I see people on why they don't make video. One, and you can address this, they don't like how they look or sound on camera. And two, they don't know what to block, they don't know what to make videos about. So how would you respond to those two objections? Well, the reason that you don't, like how you look or sound on camera is because you're not used to it. So if you start doing it regularly and then you spend the time to play it back and watch it back and do some editing, eventually you just become desensitized to it. And then after a couple of weeks, it'll never bother you again. But if you're only making a video every couple of months, of course, the minute you play it back, you're so critical of yourself. And I kind of feel like, you know what, I'm not some hot young chick, I'm 50. And if somebody doesn't want to work with me because of the way I look, then forget them. I don't want to work with them either. So I don't really obsess over how I look on camera. The day that I film, I make sure that I just do my hair and I look presentable, but that's about the end of it. And as far as your voice goes, you are the only person who hears your voice differently because your voice has to resonate in your head before it comes out. Everyone else hears your voice the same way and that's how it sounds on camera. There's really nothing you can do about it. So why obsess over something you can't really change and just you know start making videos you'll get used to it i promise after a couple of weeks it won't even be a factor anymore absolutely i, I agree 100 percent. and i think um i think also and uh i would add not over obsessing and over watching your own videos because i think we can be really critical i think it's good to watch them so that we learn how could we improve or whatever but not to watch yourself over and over and over and over again to the point where you're picking it apart yourself right i mean do yeah. you do you watch yours over and over karen or i mean i kind of do but i'm not doing it with the intent of finding fault with it i'm kind of watching it like hey, you know, I, this is kind of fun to watch. If I were a client, I think that I would enjoy this. And it's more of like a re, re, an affirmation, if you will, that I think what I'm doing is working. So I should keep doing it. I'm going to guess you are probably a naturally, um, are you naturally a pretty confident person? Like, this is who I am and I'm good. Or yeah, you... I would say so as not, maybe not in, well, okay. So let me back up. I lived in Atlanta until last June and then I moved to Savannah. So I was starting over in a brand new market and confident being here. No, because nobody knew me. I had no name recognition. People don't know that I've been in real estate for 14 years. You know, they didn't know any of that stuff. I could have been newly licensed for all they knew. So I wasn't really confident about that. But I did major in music in college, so I was going to be a, an opera singer of all things, and I have countless hours experience being on stage, so that part never really bothered me. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm confident in front of the camera. That, you know, you just hit the nail on the head. You're confident on a stage, and, and, and I'm with you. I think that's where I do want to give, give that permission to somebody who's not a little bit more room because I think people that people like me and you that are, have been on the stage, you know, throughout our lives are, might be a little bit more naturally ad adept to, you know, we, we, we can jump on and kind of do our thing or somebody who's really shy and really nervous and hasn't been, it might just take them a little bit longer. So your advice of just do it is exactly spot on. Just do it. Just start making them. You're going to start feeling more comfortable. Things are going to get better. And and I'm sure we all at first struggle with the lighting and the audio and how to, how can we improve these? But none of us are perfect right out of the gate. You know, gosh, I made the disaster of trying to do the green screen, bought all the equipment, did the green screens and the, oh, what a mess that was. I mean, everyone. <laughs> I and I finally said, Lori, just go back to the roots 
flip on a light switch and hit the rec hit the computer and just do it. Because I actually literally stopped making videos for several months because the green screen messed me up so bad. So I love yours. What I like about yours is you've done a lot of things really, really well. You've got it, you've got your intro. You're very consistent about that, and I'm not near as consistent about that. I love the way you kind of do this little voice intro, and then you say, "And we're going to start right now." And then you roll out your little um, the, video, the little logo and stuff that comes out, and right. then, and then you get into the actual video itself. So, how, where how did you learn to do those things? I totally stole that from somebody else. His name is Nick Nimmin, and he has a killer YouTube channel where he is talking about how to grow a YouTube channel. He's not a real estate agent. He just talks about how to make good videos. Oh. And when, when I had this epiphany of I should really start making videos, it was that old adage of when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And suddenly I started discovering all these people on YouTube that were teaching you how to be on YouTube. So Sonny Leonard Doozy was one, Nick Nimmin was one, and that's his intro. And I hope he's not mad, but I totally stole that from him. And other people that are just showing you, this is how you should make the format of your video. And it's very, it's very simple. You do your hook, which is, I'm telling you what the movie is going to be about. Then we have your intro. Who are you, where are you, and why should anybody be watching this video? And then you have the topic that you're talking about. And then you just wrap it up with a call to action. So my videos are all typically around five minutes long. They're not excessive. And you had asked earlier where you come up with ideas. Basically, just think about the questions that you get asked over and over again. When I first started making videos, one of the first things I did was, why should I have a home inspection when I just paid 450 bucks for an appraisal? I can't tell you how many times I've been asked that question by a first time buyer. So I figured, make it into a video. That's right. That's exactly right. Spot on. Start with your own customers' questions. I mean, gosh, if we just listen to them, they've got a lot. They've got a lot of questions. And sometimes we're giving advice, pr predicting the questions. Those are the same types of things we want to be creating videos around. There's also, is, is there anywhere else that you get your ideas from? Um, I will read a blog post or I'll see something on Pinterest and think, oh, that's a good idea. I should, I should look about that. And I just keep a little journal in my bag so that anytime I have an idea, I can just write it down on the page that I call brain dump, just start gathering all these ideas. And then I treat the video just like it's a blog post. So I go and I do my keyword research and I did a video. My idea was how long does it take to buy a house? But when I did my keyword research, I decided the keyword I actually wanted to go for was how long does it take to close on a house? Right. So if I, if I hadn't done my keyword research, I wouldn't have known that. And I was able to rank for that in like a day because nobody was using that specific search term. But yet it was getting something crazy like 4,400 searches a month, which I never would use that phrase, but apparently 4,400 people were. So Please. then I just sit down and I do the keyword research and then I go film the video using the keyword. Yeah. And I would tell those of you that are at that level where you believe you can sit down and use some simple tools and do some keyword research that is, you know, Google's getting smarter and smarter and it's more about, it's becoming more and more about topic and less about specific keywords. However, if you do nail the keyword, and it is what people are searching. You're definitely going to still, and you've got good quality content. You've got good search visibility. You have a chance of outranking everybody if you follow if you follow some of those those guidelines. If you're not at that level, don't get caught up in it. Go make your videos. But I, there's different levels in where everybody is, and so Karen's kind of got a got a got a um, understanding of all how all of this works now. And so she's able to put those into a process that, that makes everything just work that much better. And that's that's really the whole concept of, of SEO and ranking on the search engines. Now, I will tell everybody, YouTube and um, Google search in general have different algorithms. And this is one of the bonuses in creating a YouTube channel. Somebody might search for something like selling a home in Savannah, Georgia, and they might find Karen's video on YouTube if they're searching on YouTube, but it may not show up on the search results or vice versa. It's less competitive or it's a better, it's considered a better value on search. So it may actually show up with a little YouTube preview 
but it might not show up on a YouTube search because there's 10 other videos that outrank. So doing them both the way that Karen's doing them, this is also the way I do it. You, you have the advantages now of both search engines because YouTube is its own search engine and Google is its own search engine. And although it's both are owned by Google, people don't understand that the way they rank are completely different. So Karen, are you, have you also been learning video optimization for ranking higher, like putting, creating series playlists and tags and how you're doing those types of things? Yes, although that stuff started to come later. I mean, at the ver at the beginning, it was just I need to be consistent. You will get you will show up in the search results in YouTube so much higher if you can be consistent. So one video every week on the same day is better than one video this week and three videos next week and two videos the following week. If you can just be consistent. So I chose a day. I decided it was going to be Monday. I picked Monday out of thin air and said I'm going to post on Monday mornings at around 10 o'clock. And I think the biggest thing has been consistency. And then after, you know, two or three months, now I've got, oh, I've got a bunch of videos. I can start making playlists. And I put links in the description to, you know, go back to my website and download this free guide. So if I'm doing a video about buying a house using a VA loan, at the end of the video for my call to action, I say, do you need to learn about you know what you qualify for no problem go to my website download this free ebook all about how to use your va entitlement to buy a home with no money down yeah it's interesting because i'm re I, when i read your bio and i agree completely um when you create these calls to action you know i'm a i'm a girl who likes to track everything and i, I don't it's not because it's naturally in my behavior profile or dna it's because i'm a marketer and i like to know where where my time, energy, and money is returning, right? And it's kind of like right. if you wrap your car and people say, what's your ROI? Well, you're never going to know what your ROI is on a wrapped car. It's something that ties into your branding. Well, video is very much the same way. Although you can create trackable links in the call to action uh, on the description, you're more than likely going to have people call that say, I watched your video, maybe, or they're going to, they're going to go over from your video and then and then they're going to do a search and they they go to your website and there's not a direct track to, to trace it from here to here. So I want to point out to people that you're not always going to know every you're not going to be able to necessarily sign an ROI to that that video work. But like what Karen said, I, I'm going to read exactly what you wrote here because I love this. You said it took about three months. I'm going to read exactly. It took about three months till I got my first lead. It was a come list me phone call. Guys, do you hear that? That's incredible. Come list me phone call. Then I got another one the following month, then buyers. I've since closed several and have more in contract right now. And I have a coming soon listing, several buyers I'm actively working with, several solid leads a week, name, phone number, email, all without paying for Facebook ads or buying leads from Zillow. So you are, even though there's probably more than you can even possibly imagine that are actually just piquing their interest right now, you are able to hear them say, I came from YouTube, or they're typing in how they heard about you, they're coming from YouTube. So you're, track, you're, you're able to track actual real deal business from your YouTube channel. Absolutely, I got a lead about an hour ago. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. And it came through my website, and he wrote a little note and said, do you have any time to talk? So I just immediately called him because I wasn't doing anything, and I was sitting at my computer when the email came in. And the first thing he said was, I just want to tell you, I've really enjoyed watching your YouTube videos. So I was going to ask him, where did you hear about me? But that was what he said first. So even though he came through my website, filling out the contact me form, he told me he came from YouTube. I love that. What software are you using, if any? Anything special for editing or shooting? I have a Mac and iMovie comes free with your Mac. So if you are a Mac user, I would say just use iMovie. It's already free. Um, one for PC users is called DaVinci Resolve that I haven't used personally, but it gets really high reviews and it's free. So DaVinci is a good one. Um, you know, there are tons of really fancy ones out there for several hundred dollars, but I just don't feel like I need that. I think oh. iMovie does everything I need to do and it didn't cost me anything. How about any special lighting or audio? Anything that anything you had to set up? Yes, yeah, so I really feel like audio is probably the most important thing along with lighting. So I just bought a $20 microphone off Amazon, not anything super fabulous, the kind that just clips onto your lapel and it plugs into the headphone jack. I record with my iPad 
and you could record with your phone. I mean, the, the cameras in our smartphones are so good these days. The only reason I use my iPad is because when it's across the room, I can see it better <laughs> because <laughs> I need reading glasses now. So I use my iPad. I plug the microphone into the headphone jack, and then I do have two lights. I don't even know what the proper term is. It's kind of like a tripod with a light bulb and an umbrella shoved in the front of it. And I bought a set of two for 50 bucks for the, the set. And yeah. I just have them on either side of the room pointing at me. And that's about it. So the camera, the, or the iPad I already had, the tripod I already had, the lights were 50 bucks and then the microphone was 20 bucks. And then the, my little animated intro that's at the beginning of every single, I just ordered that off of Fiverr. Yeah. I love everything you just said. That's pretty much the way I'm mind stuff's wired as well. The only thing I spent any, I mean, my, I have one, I have the diva ring, the round light that, uh, uh -huh. for Facebook live videos and the phone actually sits in there. And that was a little bit more expensive, but you can get those. You, the, I've got tabletop ones that are just on a tiny little tripod that were less than 50 bucks for two of them that do the job on lighting. It is amazing how cheap and easy it is to get started with video. That that part shouldn't be anybody's challenge because that that part's pretty simple. Um, I did want to add for the for anybody that's struggling with where to get ideas, it's the exact same thing I teach for my blogs. Uh, Quora, Q U O R A dot com. Quora. Go to Quora and type in buying a house or military relocation or selling a house or uh, short sale or VA loans or FH loan, any kind of, and you can see just a slew of questions that people ask that you can go make videos around. There's another website I like also free called answerthepublic.com. And Answer the Public actually goes out and scours the web and it scours sites like all social channels and Quora and it puts them in an aggregate. It puts in the data into why questions, when questions, how questions, where questions. So you literally never have to think of another idea with those those two websites. You could just ever make a video every day. There's so many topics. It'll blow your mind. Um, I still think the questions, Agreed. the questions your customers are actually asking are the best because they're local. You know, you're they're really relative. But then these other websites are fantastic for that kind of thing. Um, Karen, how long are you time blocking? Now you're making one video a week and I, and I know you're doing some editing at, uh, on your videos. Um, and you said you're spending a couple days doing that. How long are you time blocking for the day of actually shooting? The day of actually shooting, it only takes me about half an hour. It, it's literally the time to turn on the lights, plug in the microphone, get the stuff set up. It takes me about 15 minutes to record a video which will en eventually end up being about five minutes long. Okay. So my process, sorry, go ahead. You're th in your 30 minutes, um, you said you're going you're, you're gonna to get it down to a five minute video, but how long do you think on average the video starts off being? It's 15 minutes roughly. The, I turn the camera on, I say my intro. If I don't like it, I say it again. I say it again until I get it exactly how I want it, and then I move on to the next section. So I don't have to memorize a big long script. I only have to memorize one or two sentences at a time. And then when I'm done with the entire video, then I hit the stop button. So now I've just got one big chunk of video that's about 15 or 20 minutes long. And then I go in and I, I'm basically just keeping the last take of every section. Because if I didn't say it correctly the first time, I do it again and I do it again. That way when I'm editing it, it's really fast. All I have to do is go to the end of the timeline and work backwards, I keep the last one because I know that was the best, and then I delete the couple that came right before it. And that saves me a ton of time with editing. So to answer your question, how much does that all take? It takes about you know half an hour on the day of recording, or what I'm trying to do now is record all four videos for the month on the same day. Ah. Figure, you know what, if I, if I already know what my topics are going to be, and I've already done my hair and I've done my makeup, why not just bang them out four in a row? It'll take me an hour, hour and a half tops, and then I don't have to record again for the rest of the month. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And, and then my editing, I'm not a super fast editor. It probably takes me about two hours worth of 
editing time and I go over to Canva and I make some slides and some pretty graphics to go along with it. So let's say that each video I'm all in for three hours. I would argue that that is a great investment of time because if you are calling FISBOs and expireds or door knocking, you are only generating leads for those three hours. And when you stop, that's it, you're done. But if I spend three hours, I can be getting leads six, 12, nine months, two years from now from somebody that saw a video that I made, you know, three months ago. Yeah, it is. Video is a gift that keeps on giving. I mean, the, the shelf life. Absolutely. Is I mean, you go do a search on YouTube. I cannot remember what I was looking up this morning. I don't think it was real estate related. Uh, and uh, there were videos on there from 2008. Oh, I know what I was looking. I was looking for uh, a video on a park, on a local park, because I wanted to embed a, it was real estate related. I wanted to embed a park onto the park page that I had built, a video on that. And I went and looked and the two video from 2008 was still ranking number one on that page because nobody has created anything better. And it wasn't right. Great. So I mean, that was 10 years ago. If you can make a video that will live on the top spot on the search results for 10 years, yeah. oh my gosh. Oh, it's, I went through yesterday and I'm deleting my own videos from 2013 because they're still outranking a bunch of my new stuff because of the total number of views, but I'm 30 pounds or I was 45 pounds heavier and I've done new stuff. So I'm like, okay, let me just go remove those at this point, get the new stuff pushed out there because they just live forever. They really yep. do. And, people, and I, know, I noticed when I went to one of those old ones on the right hand side, all the suggested videos were all my old videos, not the new ones. And so I'm like, okay, That's we're going to change that really quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it is, it's, it is incredible how long they can live. It's such a, such a good use of time, such a, such a great use of time. And I like yeah. yours. Your, yours are light. Yours are light. They're easy to digest. They're, um, they're fun They're So I think that's great. I, I think, I think if you're not that personality and you're, you're more stoic and you're more numbers driven and, and, you know, kind of a serious, that's okay too. You will attract. Uh, absolutely. You'll attract the people that are very analytical and they want the details. Whereas I'm more of the broad overview type of personality. So I think there's room for every personality type on YouTube and the people who want to watch you will be similar personality types as yours. And then you'll probably really enjoy working with those people. Yeah, it was interesting. I'll, I'll share this that, that um, for my, with my marketing company at Ballon Brands, I, I've only been the only one making videos except for one, I got finally got one of my real estate agents to get really into making market report videos. But everybody's still, they're all nervous about getting on camera. They don't know what to say or they don't want to stop. And, you know, so I've just kind of always been that person. Well, the marketing company, Starting on, I started fourth quarter by making this announcement to everybody that, hey guys, we are going to create a culture of video, and and we can't scale our company, we can't grow, we can't build if I'm the only one making video. It shouldn't always be the Lori Ballin show. It's all of us. And so I said, starting January first, everybody on the marketing side, shy not shy, has to make a video a week. Now I gave them permission. You can go interview an expert. You can. You can make a screen share how to tutorial. You can do a talking head video. I don't care. It could be a minute and a half. It can be 15 minutes. Everybody has to make a video. Boy, I'll tell you that changed our world because there's people that love Kevin. There's people that love Sabrina. There's people that love me. There's people, and being able to get all those different personalities now and, and, has really, really increased everything on our on our video channel. So it's sometimes fun to bring in another expert, bring in another spin on it so that you can have a different personality on there, you know, interviewing clients. And because not everybody's gonna gonna, you know, I know for a fact not everybody's gonna love the way I present. So it's fun to bring in other people. So that's and that I love I love what you said where you could do a screencast where you're not even on video. The 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 video that has the most views on my channel is one where I'm not on camera. It was yep. one where I went over to a neighborhood and I have one of those suction cup mounts that goes on my dashboard and I just stuck my phone in it and I drove through the neighborhood saying, here's the pool, here's the golf course, yeah. these are what the houses look like, this is yeah. what the median price is. And that thing's had 4,000 views. Yep. Those are my favorite. I'm telling you, as a real estate agent, you should, as a real estate agent, the talking head videos are fantastic. But the more you can get in the field and show people, and those are harder to do, but show people 
These are the neighborhoods. This is the park. This is where Zappos is and compared to whatever. Here's the tiny home area. Here's the whatever. And people don't do those as much because it does require more to get out. But wouldn't you, if you were moving to Savannah, Georgia, and you've never been there, wouldn't you want to see, okay, this neighborhood looks like this. Do people park in their in their in their in their yard and and where what is it you know what is it? they want to see everything from the width of the street to where the trash cans are to the you know oh absolutely 100% those are those are tremendous videos so they really um, are and the best part is that nobody is doing it and that was part of the reason why I decided to go all in with video was because there's no competition if you crazy? look if you go crazy? on YouTube and you type in you know Austin homes for sale, realtors in Austin, all you're going to see are listing videos. And the, the, the agent is never in the camera. You don't hear them, you don't see them. There's no way for anyone to establish rapport with you. If you're nowhere to be found in the video, it's just a slideshow of photos of your newest listing. So if you start making these videos, I guarantee you, you're just going to dominate your market in no time. Yeah, it's so true. If you were to try to take on the, the people on the search engines on page one, you're taking on Zillow and Realtor.com and Trulia and, and whoever the local specialists are, you're, you're, gonna, you're out for a long haul. You better commit to a year or two. It's going to be it's going to be a hunt. But in the first day, you can have a video rank on the top of YouTube. I mean, it's incredible. Yes, it is. Yes. And, and it does, of course, everything depends on your competition. And then, of course, how consistently you're building your channel and how you're titling and tagging and descripting. There's a, there are some other layers there. But honestly, the biggest thing is just do it. Just get on camera. And exactly as Karen said, pick a consistent time to do it. If you can do it once a week and you know you can do it on a certain day of the week, that's a fantastic way to build the channel. If all you can commit to at first is once a month, then just don't ever let a month go by that that you don't do it and make sure that those videos are quality enough to compete, meaning just really the information that, that's on the actual video and that it's not dark and that you can be heard. And those are going to help help make it rank even more. Any other um, that I, I see I, I'm looking at your your uh, our little profile sheet we filled out. It's definitely scalable. I agree with you 100 um, percent. What advice as I leave you, would you want to make sure that everybody takes away from this call if they want to be like you? Well, I the reason that I chose YouTube over other social media as far as doing videos, because I could put videos out on Facebook, but the people that are on YouTube are searching for the information. They didn't just stumble across it in their newsfeed by accident, and they didn't just see it because you're their friend. They were actually looking for that information. So if you are trying to market yourself to people who don't already know you, this is a way to not only do it effectively, do it for free and be able to kill it in no time because I guarantee you there are probably very few other agents in your marketplace who are doing it. Yep, I agree 100%. Spot on, great advice, great actionable um, tips for everybody today. I will include um, in the description and in the write-up, I'll include Karen's channel so you guys can all watch her videos and of course i'll include her phone number and website so that you can send her real estate referrals in savannah georgia and then um i will also include links to those couple of uh youtube channels that you mentioned that you've also been learning from just so that we can um give them some love and allow other people great to, to go read those as well and i thank you so much for your time today it's been fantastic thank you so much for having me i love talking about youtube and i hope some other people will be inspired to try it all right. Thank you so much, Karen. You have a fantastic day. You too, Lori. All right. Bye-bye.